God. He's been understanding to me. He's understood me better than anybody. I'm telling you, he's understood me better than I've understood myself. When I thought, Jessica, that I was a total failure, and I throw up my hands and say, I just give up, I just quit. He encouraged me to go on. He encouraged me to go on. I can, I'm telling you, I've said so many times the Lord called me to preach. I was telling some friends past couple of weeks ago, uh, I'm trying not to talk a whole lot, maybe I won't. But in 1978, uh, my dad, in the fall of 1978, my dad was asked to preach a revival at the Lysmore, that's in Clay County, Lysmore United Methodist Church. Now my dad pastored a Pentecostal church. But Brother Herb, the pastor of the United Methodist Church, him and his church council, said the Lord showed them that they, they should get Brother Paul to come preach a revival. And Brother Paul said, Lord, I'll do my best. That's my dad. But my dad was preaching that revival I, as a young man just around 20 years old. He added up 22, 21. Had a struggle on himself. Zach was a part of the, that one of the things of the world. But there was part of it down deep inside that had a hunger for God. But I knew both wouldn't work, Jessica. Man, I was so struggling. And in that revival in that United Methodist Church in 1978, the Lord started, something started going on inside of my mind, inside of my body. And by the December of that year, the Lord made Himself known to me that He wanted me to preach His Word. That was one of the big times. I said, hey, Lord, do you need glasses? Have you lost your mind? No way can he be called an unworthy, an unfit vessel as me. As you've heard me say, I'm so ashamed, but for seven long years, I've told him no. Finally, in 1985, I surrendered to the call. And I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. But I've tried, I've tried my very best. I'm least in the preaching category. But I've tried my very best to pro proclaim the good news of the gospel. Now, I've quoted several times throughout the years that the Bible teaches that the gospel is good news. Now some of the revised versions says that the gospel is good news. But the King James Version don't say it, but the King James teaches along with the other versions that the gospel, the true word of God, is good news, and it is. Listen to me. Do you remember what Paul told Timothy? He said, Timothy and, and Chris and I was talking about it not too long ago. Dad preached the night the Lord really touched me. How did Paul told Timothy? He said, Son, when I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech or of man's wisdom, but in the power and in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. You know what, folks? If I preach what I think or I preach my ideas, it'll hurt somebody. 
But the gospel's that anointed with the Holy Ghost as he was talking about church singing. It'll touch hearts. It'll touch hearts. Let me read something to you real quick. And, and I'll let them sing two or three more. I want you to turn over to Romans chapter 9. And uh, I'll read while you're turning there. But after Romans, I want you to go over into Corinthians. The Bible teaches us there in Romans that in chapter nine, chapter 10, I'm sorry, and verse 10, a scripture that we quote quite often, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him, shall not be ashamed. Lord, help me tonight. I, I'll tell you, I, I'm glad for the word of God. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Jack, he ain't got no select people picked out. I, I've told the story time and time again. Zach growed up and got in love and got married and one day I'd tell one of my buddies, I said, my boy's gone, even though he wasn't, he was just out of the house. And I said, I miss him. Jenna, Jenna, she was hoping things would change. She thought she was hoping the packing order would change. After me and that individual quit talking, she says, that mean uh, you like me the best now? <laughs> I said, no, honey. I said, that don't mean that I like you the best. I said, I didn't never like or love Zach any, any more than you or you more than him. I said, it could never happen. And I read a Paul said, listen, he said, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how, listen, how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and to bring good tidings and good things. But they have not all made, all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Let me read you another scripture real quick. The Bible teaches us there in 1 Corinthians, our brother, preach it again. In verse 13 of chapter 9 of Corinthians, he said, Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they, they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Pay close attention. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory and void. Paul said, listen, if I sought somebody else, if I sought people's glory, and people's praise and people's attention. He said it would be better for me to die. Think of that. It's serious business. But he went on to say, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity it is laid upon me. Yea, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Now, Getting back to the gospel, uh, help me out here, Zach. Uh, Ephesians chapter, if I'm wrong here, Ephesians chapter 6. What verse is it that says, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel? Am I in the right chapter? Ephesians chapter 6. Listen to me. I got to thinking about the gospel that Jenna and I was going down the road this morning. Huh? Ephesians 6.15. Having your 
feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Peace. And there in Ephesians uh, chapter what? The gospel of peace. <laughs> the gospel of peace. Come on. Yeah. And Jenna and I was talking this morning and uh, I got to thinking Zach all day about the gospel. You know what I've done? I know what the gospel is. I've been preaching the gospel for, for uh, 35 years trying to preach. But I come home and got the dictionary and see what Brother Webster said. You know what Brother Webster said right off the bat? He said, good news. Praise the Lord forever. How glad he believes it too. You know what, Zach? A lot of folks, as Paul was saying there, will use the word of God to benefit themselves. They'll use the word of God to make somebody else look bad. But listen to me. We'll quote John 3.16. Oh, we've got, we've bought all kinds of home interior stuff. And Daddy's got a ball cap with John 3.16 on it. Daddy's got a, uh, uh, mommy's got a bumper sticker in her back window. John 3.16. Oh, listen to that sweet sound and music to our ears. For God so loved the world, Brother Ronnie, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But Zechariah, verse 17, for God sent not his Son into the world. Hallelujah, forever to condemn the world, but to him the world may be saved. You and I tonight, we ain't got time to condemn nobody. We ain't got time to pick out nobody's fault. But all we got time to do is spread the gospel. For the gospel is what? Good news. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me share something else with you. Help me out, Zach. Luke chapter 17, if I'm not mistaken. Was that where the ten lepers cried out to Jesus? Je Jesus was there between... Galilee and Samaria. 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 And I, I could be off, but yeah. I'm close. Yeah. But chapter 17, the Bible said that those ten lepers cried out, Jesus, what did they say? Master. Huh? Yeah. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Yeah. They cried out and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And you know what Jesus said to them? He said, go show yourself to the priest. Now, what a pitiful thing to do that, to say to ten men that, that's been separated from their loved ones because of this dreaded disease. And what a terrible thing to say to these men. He, when he had the power to instantly say, be thou made whole. But what did Jesus say to him? He said, go show thyself to the priest. And thank God they was obedient because he said, as what the scripture as, say as there? They went, they as went. they went, they were cleansed. Listen to me. A lot of times we're waiting. And a lot of times we're, we won't get up. But I'm telling you what. He told those men, he said, go. Because then the priest had to give you permission. Uh, you know, now uh, we got the COVID and, and, and we got, you, you've got to get tested, you know, to make sure that you've recovered. And that's basically yeah. what they done with leprosy. Yeah. They had to go show themselves to the priest. And, and Zach, those guys started a journey in no shape to see the priest. Hallelujah, I can preach two hours. And, but they, what did they do? As soon as Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest, the Bible said, as they went, they were cleansed. Listen to me. The devil's trying to make you doubt that you're no good. And listen, Jesus is calling you right now. Jesus is commanding you to go show yourself to the priest. You can make it. You can make it if you'll start your journey, but you've got to start your journey. Are you ready? 
Are you ready? Why don't you just ask the Lord to come in? Just a simple prayer. I'm not praying it tonight. In case you don't know, all you got to say is, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me, and I want saved. That'll work if you believe with your heart, and you mean it with your heart. God bless you tonight. What do you got now, Zach? Um, How about did I mention? Well, let's do that then. The word gospel, Dad, I, was, I, I read this before, but I was looking it up to make sure I was right. Uh, did not originate with Christians. It's a Greek word, evangelion, that we get our word evangelist or evangelical from, evan evangelion. And it was used in a lot of different ways in ancient literature, but one of the ways that it was used, you know, there was, every so many years there would be a great upheaval and, and one of the emperors maybe of Rome would die and it was always a, well, what's gonna happen next? What's, what's gonna take place next now that the old emperor, because it's not like, you know, they had a, a government, but it's, it wasn't set up like ours where there was a, a neat order of succession. It was, it was kind of a tumultuous time. And, and when one emperor would die, they would say, oh gosh, is this going to be the end of, of the empire? Is this going to be it? But no, from Rome they would dispatch, like Paul said, uh, how beautiful are, are the feet of the messengers that bear good news. They would dispatch messengers from Rome yeah. to all the corners of the empire Bless to Lord. say, we've got Evangelion, we've got good, yeah, news. good news, there's somebody else on the throne and everything else is going to be okay. So notice that in the Gospels when Paul says, I've come to preach the Gospel, he does not say, I've come to preach the Gospel of Julius Caesar or of Caesar Augustus or of Constantine or of Nero. He does not say, I've come to preach that good news. He says, I've come to preach the good news good of news. Jesus. Yeah. Of Jesus. The gospel not of empire and not of conquering swords, but the gospel of peace. Amen. Paul said, there's somebody on the throne. Amen. Bless the Lord. You're Amen. here tonight. You listen, Ronnie, you write the Lord tonight. I know you're at the house. But you got something to add, type her in there, buddy, what they're saying. Any, any more of you? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yeah, there's somebody on the throne.
It's not good news for everybody. It's not good good news for anybody. Um, and I, I love that. Obviously, that was before I was around, but I love that story about uh, Papa going to preach there at Lismore because there was a lot of controversy. You didn't touch on that. There was a lot of controversy in inviting the Pentecostal preacher up to the Methodist church to hold a revival, wasn't there? There was... But yeah. that Methodist didn't care. Well, no, that but I mean, people, go, oh, yeah, people yeah. talked about it. Yeah, they, they, were some, they were some around the community said, I can't believe. What is that recipe going to come up with? <laughs> what in the world is going to come out of that? Pentecostals and Methodists don't mix. Yeah. Well, bless Zach. God spoke to my heart. I was thinking a while ago, I was thinking about what I shared with the people. And I, and I know you and Jessica have been such a great blessing to people, Jenna, and all. And I thought, Jessica, what if, if finally, what if the Lord had not been long suffering and I, I went the way that I desired to go? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, satisfied myself, but not honored him. I give this that. Then, I went and I had Jesus to give to you. Yeah, I'm glad you did. Listen to me. I wanted, just like any other dad, Jessica, I wanted my kids, and Tammy did too, to have everything we could afford. Oh, God, put it down deep in my heart. I wanted my children to have Jesus for anything else. Because I know that I know that I know He's more important. I'm telling you, I'm glad they got an education. I'm glad they got a good job. But more than they got Jesus, none of that matters. So, praise the Lord. If y'all don't go ahead, I'll be here all night. Well, what I was, was going to say, mankind builds up so many walls. Um, 
It hurts us. So between people, the, the Christians build up walls between us. We, we, we just build up separations. And, and that's why I love, love that he took his scripture. He determined not to know anything. Like the Apostle Paul said, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all we got to know. That's all we got to know. So if the gospel isn't good news for everybody, it's not good news for anybody. If you're watching tonight, you build up a wall. And I've said that so many times. A lot of times, not a lot of times, but sometimes, I'll put it this way, I'll give you the very bit of that. Like I believe us built our, our denominational wall has confused so many unsaved. They said, well, the Baptist thinks they're right, the Methodist thinks they're right, and the Pentecostals say they're right, and the Church of Christ says they're right. I am totally confused. Listen, folks, if there ever was a time we need to come together, it'll work. Like Zach said, if a gospel ain't good for one, it ain't good for none. Go ahead, Zach. Well, what, and unfortunately, sometimes Christians build such big, high walls that folks that want to get to Jesus don't feel like they can. Yeah.